So the assignment was to figure out using coloration algebra, the Alexander polynomial of the figure eight, not four one. Um, so to do that, what we need is to set up the, the generalized magic average equation, where the generalized magic average equation was z equals tx plus one minus ty, where t is now thought of as a variable, like an par independent parameter. Um, and we guarantee that it's invertible by doing all of our algebra over this ring of Laurent polynomials in uh, integer coefficients. All right, so these are polynomials with potentially both positive and negative integer exponents on our variable t, uh, whose coefficients are all integers. All right, so that's the that's the, the the module of which we're going to do all of our linear algebra now. Um, <coughs> and so all I would have to do then, in principle, is for each of the four crossings in our diagram, set up that equation. So if I label my crossings A, B, C, and D, and I label the arcs, or rather label the colors of the arcs, I suppose, X1, X2, uh, X3, X4, then we would just need to keep track of at each of my crossings. Um, the crossings are going to correspond to my rows. The arc colors are going to correspond to my columns, x3, x4. And just as we were doing before, we just have to keep track of which is my overcrossing and which is my undercrossing. If I rearrange this magic average equation to get a zero on one side, I'll find out that I have tx plus 1 minus ty minus z is equal to zero. But one thing that we noticed that we didn't really get a chance to explore in our last class is that unlike the magic average that we were looking at a few minutes ago, where the x and the z coefficients were equal because x and z were symmetric in that equation, we don't have that in this generalized equation. t is not the same thing as negative 1 uh, anymore. Right? Uh, when this was all happening over you know, uh, mod 5 with t set equal to 4, then it was true that the x and z were symmetric, but it's no longer the case. So something has happened when we've begun using this generalized magic average that is forcing us to distinguish between the two understrands at a given crossing. What that does is it forces us now to work with oriented knots rather than unoriented knots, as we've been accustomed to. So this is as good a time as any to start thinking in that way. Right? So what I'm going to do now is fix an orientation on my knot. So I'm going to start maybe by taking the arc x1 and just sort of fixing this clockwise orientation on it. Then I just follow that strand all the way through my knot, just sketching in those little orientation as though I'm driving my car along this knot diagram. Just draw in some little arrows that indicate which direction we're now parameterizing this knot. Because at the end of the day, um, we're going to have to build a system of equations using this magic average, this generalized magic average, and each of those equations is now sensitive to the difference between the one of the undercrossing arcs x and the other of the undercrossing arcs z. Right. Um, so that thing that matters now. Um, let's go and look at the first of these crossings, the crossing that we call a here in this diagram. Um, all right, so we took a quick break to just change our knot diagram into its opposite, <laughs> which happens to be the same knot for one because it's amphichiral. Um, but for picky reasons, this is going to make our, our algebra a little bit easier to introduce. So here are my four crossings again. Um, and if we zoom in on crossing A for a moment, um, what it looks like, if we sort of sketch it in a picture, is at crossing A, we've got an overcrossing strand, which is going from northwest to southeast. So I'm going to draw it like this. Uh, and this arc happens to be the arc X1. And then we also, at that crossing, have X2 coming inbound to that crossing and X4 going outbound. 
So if I think of myself as driving a car um, in this knot diagram, then I'm going to be coming in here on X2 and then crossing underneath a bridge, which we call X1, and then leaving as X4. And so it seems most natural for us to use X2 and X1 to determine X4. In other words, I'm going to use the fact that I crossed under the arc X1 to determine how my color should change, right, if I'm traveling along this knot diagram. Um, but we have to take the, the orientations of these arcs now into account. In particular, um, as I'm driving underneath this arc, the traffic on the bridge above me is going from my left to my right. Now that our knots are oriented, we are going to have to distinguish between that situation and the opposite, where that traffic will be going from left to right. We're going to call this scenario a positive undercrossing and write x4 as x1 triangle x2. So we're going to reintroduce this triangle idea. Um, and for positive crossings, x, x triangle y is defined by this magic average equation. We're going to also need to figure out what this relationship should look like for the opposite case, for a negative crossing, which again is completely the same with the exception of the traffic on the bridge going the other way, going from right to left as I cross under the bridge. So in this case, whoops, for a negative crossing, we're just going to label that triangle operation here as two different ways we could do it. We could make the triangle face the other way if we want to. Um, but the other convention that we actually don't get to use for a few minutes with any rigor, but we'll use it now anyway, it's just triangle with an inverse above it. So the inverse triangle, we're going to call that a negative crossing. So again, the rule of thumb is which direction is the traffic on the bridge going? as we drive under it. If the traffic's going from my left to my right, it's a positive crossing. If it goes from my right to my left, it's a negative crossing. In order to implement this in my system of equations, um, we know how to do it for positive crossings because we just use the magic average equation. What we haven't figured out is how to do it for the negative crossings. So what should this equation look like in my matrix um, if we do have a negative crossing? And we will have at least one negative crossing in this diagram. But A is not it. Okay. The crossing at A is one in which the traffic on the bridge over me is going from my left to my right. So this is a positive crossing. I'm going to label that with a plus up in the upper left. Or maybe I'll label it with a triangle rather than an inverse triangle. Um, and so that means that I must be able to use the magic average equation as it is, or if you like, the one above it, probably easier for linear algebra, um, and give my my bridge, my overcrossing strand, my y, a coefficient of 1 minus t. And in this example, that's the arc x1. So 1 minus t is my coefficient for x1. Um, x2 is my inbound under arc. And that one gets the coefficient of t in it. x4 is my outbound arc, and so it gets the negative 1. And then the missing strand that doesn't participate just gets a 0. And so that gives me my crossing equation at A. Because we had a positive crossing, um, we use the, the, the regular form of the magic average. So take a look at the crossing at B. Is that a positive crossing or is that a negative crossing?